hello everyone, it's Luke from Me and My Gardener channel here with another very exciting episode for you today. Today's episode is going to be another complete growing guide in our complete growing guide series, but today we're gonna to be talking about spinach. It is a great early spring vegetable that I know a lot of people have been asking us to do a growing guide on. So first let's talk about the soil and let's jump right on in it. The soil that's ideal for growing spinach is one that's very well broken down, well draining, but also has lots of organic matter. And that's because spinach is very heavy feeding. It uses a lot of nutrients to grow, and it's one of the heaviest feeding leaf crops in the garden. So one of the things that you wanna do is you wanna re-amend every spring with a good compost to keep that organic matter up. And then what you also wanna do is make sure that the soil has some sand in it, very similar to lettuce. You don't want the, the roots of the spinach to be rotting. And oftentimes in early spring, which is when you wanna plant, the soil is still very damp and it's very cold. And the reason why some of your early spring crops are the most prone to root rot is because the bacteria that live in the soil, they thrive in that cool, damp environment. And so as the temperature heats up, you don't have nearly as much of a problem because the soil tends to dry out on a more regular basis. And even though the bacteria is still there, uh, the soil is not as cold and as damp. So what we wanna do is we wanna plant though in early spring and that's because the temperature in the soil is very crucial for having successful spinach. A lot of times people want to grow spinach all year round or they, they try to grow it too late in the season. And I'll, I'll tell you what, for the years that I've been growing spinach, you're lucky if you get spinach to go past kind of early to mid June. It's a very, very fast turnaround vegetable. It's delicious while you have it, but it's, it's just not able to be grown because the fact it goes to seed, it bolts very quickly. And that's what discourages a lot of gardeners. But I'll tell you what, there's an easy way to, to combat the bolting and that's to use cool soil. As soon as the frost has left the soil, you can still have nights that are uh, you know, below freezing. Spinach is a super cold hardy vegetable. So right now is the best time to plant, right after the, the frost leaves the soil and you can work the soil a good six, seven, eight inches down. Um, and, that's, and that's the best time because the soil is still going to be damp and cool, which is, what which is what is required to keep the spinach from bolting. Now, the next thing we wanna do is talk about fertilizer. So the fertilizer I use when fertilizing my spinach is Trifecta Plus. And the reason for that is because Trifecta Plus has a lot of the fast acting nutrients as well as the slow release nutrients. And that's very important I find because of the fact that the spinach grows very fast. It's kind of a fast turnaround vegetable. You have a lot of growing season left and I like to plant stuff in the garden after I grow my spinach and harvest it. So what I wanna do is I wanna make sure that I leave nutrients for the other plants that I might be planting. For instance, a lot of times we'll grow our spinach and then what we'll put in behind it is beans because beans kind of replenish some of that nitrogen because they're a nitrogen fixing plant. Um, and then you're also still going to have some of the nutrients left over from the, the slow release component of trifecta. And that's what I really like to do and that's why I like to use trifecta with my spinach. Now you don't have to use trifecta. Another great one is uh, blood meal. Blood meal is super high in nitrogen and it's kind of got that fast acting, slow release component to it, but it's lacking the phosphorus and the potassium that is found in trifecta. And I like to give them a well-rounded fertilizer because you're going to have a healthier, more well-rounded plant if you do so. So that's that. Now let's talk about kind of the secret to growing, <laughs> a little windy. Now let's talk about the secret to growing the, uh, the spinach because there's a few tricks that I think a lot of people make mistakes on. And they're not mistakes that are going to be game changers, but uh, they're going to help you grow more spinach in a smaller space, which I know a lot of people wanna do because the fact that the, the spinach, they just grow so fast and you wanna be able to get the most enjoyment out of them. And I think a lot of times people, they follow kind of these spacing rules. And I don't know why people space spinach, I honestly don't. But if you look in the square foot gardening guide, as much as I love the guide and I like uh, what it promotes, you're not getting anything out of that for that square foot. I mean, you're talking one plant every like three or four inches in a square foot, you might be getting 12 plants in a square foot. And if that, and that's just not okay by me whatsoever because you're only picking one or two leaves per plant, maybe four at most. And if you only have 12 plants, that's not even enough to feed a single person. And what I want is I want high intensity, high return. And so mine is a little bit different. So come in close and see what I do in my square foot. And I think you'll be pretty impressed because they grow fine and we're able to get a lot of bang for our buck. Check this out. All right, so what you wanna do is you wanna just draw out your square foot there. 
and then I prefer to start with seed. So you have your square foot, you're gonna fertilize. That's always important to fertilize because the plants need some food to get going. I give them about a quarter cup of trifecta per square foot, and I work that in to the top one to two inches. Don't dig it very deep. I see that I see gardeners doing that all the time, and they think that the more your fertilizer is incorporated into the soil, the better your plants are gonna do. That's actually completely false. The fertilizer belongs in the top one to two inches because of the fact that when you're starting from seed like we are, you want the plants to be able to reach that fertilizer right away and get going. Also, as the roots grow down, the water you give the plants or the rain that falls on the plants is going to take that fertilizer down due to leaching. If you put your fertilizer down, by the time the plants are down there, the fertilizer is even further down and it never really catches up. So you're constantly playing catch up and the plants are never really doing as good as they possibly could be doing. So that's why we just work into the top one to two inches there. And then we're gonna start with seed here. Now you can go with whatever seed source you want, but I recommend mygardener.com seeds because they're only 99 cents. And we're gonna use about, not that many, but I would say about uh, a teaspoon of seeds or so, maybe about that much. And all we're gonna do is we're just going to sprinkle the seeds in this square foot. And you got probably, I'd say 50 or so seeds in this square foot here instead of the 12 normally. Now we're gonna cover it up. And I never recommend starting from plants, which I'll talk about in a second. As soon as I'm done covering these up here, just give them a little quick cover up with some soil. Pat them down and make good contact with the soil. That's always key. Pat them down. And now you should not have to water initially because the, the soil is already pretty damp since it's early spring, but make sure it doesn't dry out completely because they are in that kind of top you know, one, one to two inches of soil, and that can dry out faster than, than deeper down. So make sure it stays pretty damp and you're gonna be good. All right, so now you're probably wondering, okay, now Luke, get to the why, get to the why of why you want us to start from seed versus starts. And I'll explain to you this. Seeds are extremely cheap, and I think they're slightly more difficult to start from seed than to start from starts. I'm not gonna lie there. It's definitely easier to go to a greenhouse or a garden center or a big box store and get a seed, a seed that's already been started and so you can pop it right in the soil. And if that's what you wanna do, great. But what I wanna stress is that I think it's much more economical because of the fact that you're growing a single plant and since you're only harvesting maybe three, four leaves per plant uh, every week or so, maybe more, um, depending on how fast it grows. What I'm, what I'm trying to get to is that you're not really harvesting a lot per plant and since garden centers, they try to make the most money possible, they're only gonna put one plant per cell. And if you buy a four pack, you're gonna be spending maybe a buck fifty, two dollars on that four pack. You're getting four plants for a buck fifty. Now, as you saw, you know, you're planting 50 plants per square foot using the seed method. And you're going to get, if you plant out each plant, you might get 15, 14, 15 plants. Uh, and that's gonna cost you about four or five dollars for those plants and you're gonna get way less, you're gonna spend more, and I just find that it's easier uh, to just spread some seeds in the ground, give it a little bit of watering in, and wait a little longer, and you're gonna get a lot better return on your harvest. That's personally my opinion. Now again, it's up to you. You're not gonna find a difference harvesting, or starting from seed versus using a plant. The only thing is, is that you're gonna get a little bit of jump start on your growing season, and that's honestly it. So if you're someone that wants to start from seed, Go for it. If you're, if you're someone that feels more comfortable starting with starts, um, I'm, I'm not gonna judge you either, but I just hope to persuade you on the seed method there. So, all right, that's all I got for you today. Hopefully you all enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. If you have any comments or questions, post them in the comments box below. I'd be glad to answer them. And make sure to check out all, their, all our other growing guides. We've got a ton over on mygarter.com. Go to videos, select growing guides, and you're gonna see them there. Or we even have a playlist here on YouTube, but I would suggest checking out mygardener.com because we've got a ton of stuff there. We've got free blogs, eBooks, all that good stuff. And uh, we even got seeds for 99 cents. So you can pick up your, your uh, spinach seeds there. So I'll talk to you all later. This is Luke from the Am I Gardener channel, hoping you all are growing big or going home. Catch you later, see ya, bye.